the elements of the CIA triad are often described as the CIA model in the industry standards when people say that their infrastructure is CIA model equipped. What they mean is that they have safeguards in place to, uh, to ensure confidentiality, to ensure availability and integrity. So this as such is known as the CIA mod model and the fundamental objective of the CIA model is to achieve a secure system. If any of these factors that is confidentiality, integrity or availability is not present in the infrastructure module, then the uh, model is not uh, considered as secure. So talking about availability of a secure system. So as I said, uh, the most common type of attack that we know out there is a denial of service attack or a distributed denial of service attack, that is DDoS. So user productivity can be greatly affected and companies can lose a lot of money if not the available data. Okay, consider this example that you are an online retailer or a cloud service provider and your e-commerce site or service is not available for your users. Then you could potentially lose current or future business when, when the DDoS is happening. It is very important to ensure that your servers, whatever information that you have stored is available whenever the user requires them. So what is the difference between DOS attacks and DDoS attacks? You can say that a DOS attack is implemented from a single subnet or from a single attack machine. But a DDoS attack is implemented from a distributed architecture. You can say that a DDoS attack is from multiple attack vector subnets. DOS attack is from a single attack vector. Generally, in the current climate, uh, DDoS attacks are more common than DOS attacks because it is very easy to overcome a DOS attack. So the malicious parties out there don't generally use DOS attacks, they use DDoS attacks. And DOS and DDoS attacks are used interchangeably and generally it is meant DDoS attacks. So the first type of um, DDoS attack is a direct DDoS attack. Direct denial of service, that is direct DDoS attacks occur when the source of the attack generates the packets regardless of the protocol application or the subnet and is, it sends the attack vector directly to the victim of the attack. So for example, you have uh, an attacker. This is a single attacker which is sitting in one subnet and it sends say TCP flooding to the victim and, and, and victim is any server. So as you can see, this is a direct connection between attacker and the victim. So this type of attack is known as direct DDoS attack. So reflected DDoS attacks uh, is another um, uh, type of DDoS attacks that uh, that is used by the attacker, but it is not on the same subnet. This here is the attacker. The attacker will send some kind of packet to a source, which the source is completely oblivious to the fact that an attacker is sending me a request packet. So the response packet, which the source will send out to the victim or to the web server is going to achieve the denial of service. Next uh, category of a DDoS attack, and that is amplification DDoS attack. So it is a form of a reflected attack itself uh, in which the response traffic that is sent by the source, uh, sent by this participant that is completely unaware of the attack. Uh, so the response packet is made up of packets that are much larger than those that were initially sent by this attacker. 